Hey everyone, this is Priya. I want to talk about the latest Gemma models that Google recently released. So Gemma is a set of foundational models built on an architecture similar to the Gemini model from uh, Google. Uh, and this is the first time that they're making a foundational set of LLMs public. So it's pretty exciting news. Um, and I'm sure that this model will soon become the, the baseline on which other variants will be built. So in this video today, I want to cover firstly a little bit basic about the Gemma model, how, you know, how the performance are and stuff. And then um, I want to spend most of the time actually going through code and how you guys can have this model up and running in Colab. or also share the results of some of my testing. So firstly, um, the Gemma model. So Google released the Gemma model in, um, in basically two different sizes. There's a 2 billion model size and the 7 billion model size. Um, they also released instruction uh, fine-tuned variants of these. Um, they, the good news is that the, as soon as the, these models were released, Hugging Face um, had them uh, up and running in their ecosystem. Um, and so we're basically going to use the Hugging Face variants of these models in the Colab notebook. Um, what's also very cool is that um, Hugging Face did benchmarking on these models um, and, and they shared the results here. I find that these results are probably more reliable than the ones um, uh, released by Google. Um, so generally, I mean, I, if you kind of look at this, there's a few things that pop out. So Gemma models are trained on 6 trillion tokens, whereas the Lava models were trained on 2 trillion tokens. So you can expect them to, um, to have more knowledge. Um, the Gemma 7B model seems to outperform the Mistral and the, the Lama 7B in terms of the scores uh, by a decent margin. Uh, the Gemma 7B model is actually inferior to the Lama 70B chart model. Um, and then finally, uh, very interestingly, they also released a Gemma 2B variant, uh, which is uh, uh, doesn't have really good leaderboard score, but given that it's such a small model, um, it can actually run on a CPU. So I think the goal with this model would be to fine tune it. This on specific tasks um, and then have like a LLM model that can do tasks on, on CPU. Okay, awesome. Um, and then very quickly, I mean, uh, all these models have prompt format. So the form format for, for this model is uh, start of turn, end of turn and user model uh, varying. Um, you don't necessarily have to worry about this because Hugging Face chart template takes care of that. So um, let's now get into how you can get this model up and running. So we're going to use uh, the Gemma 7B um, instruction fine tune model from Hugging Face. Um, you do have to log into Hugging Face and uh, accept the license conditions of this model before you can um, use it. So uh, back to Colab now um, and going through the model, make sure that you have the latest version of transformers here. Um, I think version 4.38 onwards have this model. You want to log into Hugging Place uh, CLI so that you can um, uh, you can use your um, access to the model there. Okay, so this uh, the 7B model, the one that we're going to load here is going to be in 4-bit quantization. Um, because that is the version that can run on this uh, T4 GPU. If you want to run the model on full precision, you need an 18 GB RAM. So you probably have to go for a A100 type of instance. Okay, very cool. So um, to run the model, we'll just use the auto tokenizer to load the model. And this is where we're going to define the the 4-bit quantization parameter. Um, when um, remember when I said that these models have a specific chat prompt template, um, when you actually use the pipeline feature of um, Hugging Face, you can apply a chat template and it's very intelligently picks the right prompt template for the model. So this is a standard format in which to kind of run the model. Um, I built a small wrapper function that you can use um, to do the generation. And um, I'll now go through my experiments in running the model. So pretty interesting results here. So I started with first just testing the model on recent facts. I asked um, who won the last FIFA World Cup and it said that it can't really have answered that because it doesn't have information. I asked who the current president of United States is and, it, and now it says that as of October 26, which probably seems to be its knowledge cutoff date, um, Joe Biden is the president, which is correct. Okay, um, I um, like moving on to sort of code generation, a very standard question, print all primes. So it did pretty well in terms of actually generating the code. It also explained the code and gave example usage. Uh, but the funny thing is that when it said print primes up till 100, and if you look at the list of prime numbers, you can see that 
it has numbers like 33, which clearly is not prime. Um, I don't think even 91 or 93 are prime. So it, it seems to have made errors in, 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 um, in printing what the actual prime numbers are going to be. Okay, um, some other code code test and generally I found like the one thing that's kind of impressive here is the the length of the response is, is pretty good, right? Like the model is not shy about responding in its length and it's uh, it does give really good um, code with with comments and then example use cases as well. Okay, um, I then tried on like just um, open text generations told it to write a report on famous Canadians born after 1950, uh, picking them from different fields and include a quiz at the end. So it does seem to have picked uh, Canadians from different field, but you see here, this uh, Margaret Edward is actually born in 1939. So it doesn't meet my criteria, but it still kind of returned that. Um, and it did include a, a quiz at the end. So um, did a decent job like with the flaw of the age. Uh, this one I, I like quite a bit. So write a humorous letter to my boss telling him I can't come to work today as I was out till last night. Um, and it, it did a pretty, pretty good job. The letter is quite humorous. Also ends by saying, I'll be office in time with a fresh cup of non-alcoholic coffee and a sincere apology. So nice, nicely done. Um, moving on to reasoning. Um, I tested it on, can Jeffrey Hinton have a conversation with George Washington? gave a rationale before answering and it did uh, correctly tell us that they are not in the same time period or have any um, documented evidence of having had a conversation. Okay, the next one I tried is another reasoning one where I um, asked it um, if they were classic puzzle, like if there are three killers um, and one innocent person and the innocent person kills kills one of the killers, how many killers are in the room now and why? And yeah, then it gives the answer is two and it says only um, two killers are left, which is wrong. There's, um, there's gonna be three killers now because the innocent person becomes a killer. So it didn't get that. Um, I asked it about general chat. So continuing as a chat and um, it, it seems to have done well here and you can see that the length of response is pretty good too. Um, the last thing that I tested is on math and I found that it did very, very badly on math reasoning. So these are from the grade school math 8K um, benchmark that's often used. The first question is um, Lucy has three times as many balloons as Henry, but when Henry wins five more balloons, then the total number that they have is 25. How many balloons did Lucy have? Um, uh, she, the model's response is that she had 20 balloons to come up up front, but that's actually not correct because Lucy had three times as Henry and when Henry had five more, the total had 25. So I think my math told that Lucy had close to 15. I think this one, it got correct. Here's another interesting one. A school library has a total of 450 fiction and nonfiction books. If the number of nonfiction books is five times the number of fiction books, how many more nonfiction books are there than fiction books? So pretty standard question. Um, what's really funny is that its answer is zero. So it's, I don't know what it's saying. There are no more nonfiction books than fiction books. It's saying that they're like probably the same number, which makes no sense because I already told it that it's five times the number of fiction books. Um, so overall, I mean, I think that on the math reasoning, it doesn't seem to do well. But um, like I said, I mean, this is just the base model, right? Like this is just the first version. I'm sure that people will use techniques like merging or fine tuning or alignment and stuff to, to have better variants of this model soon. Hope you guys like this. Uh, share your comments in the comment section and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.